Ronaldo faces a $1 billion lawsuit, widespread controversy over his move to the Saudi league, and to add fuel to the fire, his latest venture into the football video game market with UFL threatens to make matters even worse. What do we know about this new game and how does it compare to EAFC? But first, let's put into perspective what Ronaldo is up against. It's no surprise EA have held the number one position of the leading football video game all the way since they first released FIFA International Soccer back in December 1993. They have an incredible first mover advantage with 30 years of experience. No other game can even come anywhere close to that. Even after losing the FIFA naming rights, they still maintain their unrivaled position very, very smoothly transitioning to EA Sports FC. Ronaldo as the main face of the game definitely puts pressure on him for the game to succeed because if not, it will certainly leave a stain on his name. We have gained access to the game and we'll test it out in just a moment, but how much is actually there to be gained? Why is Ronaldo taking such a big risk? Based on EA's most recent financial report released in January 2024, we can estimate that EA FC 24 made around $300 million in just three months from October to December 2023. It's certainly a mountain to climb, but if they could take a slice of that just 10% they would be generating $120 million per year. It is a little bit difficult to see how exactly they're going to be making revenue because UFL is a free to play game and also they advertise as zero pay to win options, but we will have to see. Cristiano Ronaldo has invested $40 million of his own money but that isn't the most important thing he's putting on the line here. We do already know that he's probably making around $200 million a year with his Al Nasser contract anyways. So the main thing here is actually his reputation. UFL has massive ambitious goals. It's partnered with the biggest clubs such as Monaco and West Ham, just to name a few. And if it does go wrong here, and if it doesn't live up to the hype, the developers, the CEO of the game, are not gonna be the ones to blame. Everyone is gonna be pointing their finger at Ronaldo. But let's get into the comparison. First, looking at the menus, EAFC has undergone a change itself this year. And when you compare the two, they do actually look quite similar. UFL, in my opinion, does have the slight edge. It looks a little bit nicer. We can see here as well with the kits and club customization. Next is player faces. We do have a nice side-by-side -side comparison here with Roberto Firmino. We do also have Zinchenko. It is up to people's preference and it is quite subjective, but UFL has done a good job here. Most importantly, we do of course have gameplay. You can tell a little bit from just watching the gameplay but we do really need to play the game to get a feel of how it is. After playing a little bit myself through the closed playtest, I can say there is still quite a bit for UFL to go. It sort of feels like a mobile game, maybe a little bit behind eFootball, and I wasn't too much a fan of the penalty system, the corners, it just doesn't feel right. Their main game mode will be similar to Ultimate Team. We can see what their card design looks like, and also how the squad menu looks like as well. We have, of course, an in-game currency, changing your formations, everything like that. And the planned release date for UFL is by the end of this year, 2024.